To drape the back bodice, start at center back seam. Place cross mark at the base of the neck. Pin down to waistline. Pin at shoulder blade level and between shoulder blade and waistline. Place cross grain at shoulder blade into balanced position. Cross mark placed at the ridge of the armhole. Distribute the fullness evenly across the shoulder blade and secure with double row of pins. Check to make sure that the balance of the shoulder blade is into position. If it's not, you will have to make a correction later. Okay. We will drape the lower portion of the bodice first. Bring the lengthwise grain down from the shoulder blade to the waistline to a point approximately halfway between dart and side seam. Pick up a pinch at the waistline and secure at tape. This position is a temporary position. It will be adjusted, perhaps, to the right or to the left, depending on how the underarm seam balances. At this point, we will proceed to balance the underarm seam. Bring the muslin around to the underarm seam at plate and pin and to waistline and pin. Be sure to allow some ease across the body at the underarm. Don't pull it too tight. This pin position, this position of the muslin, muslin at this point is temporary. At this point, turn back the muslin of the back bodice, release the muslin of the front bodice, bring them together at the side seam, pinning them at plate, and at waistline. At this point, separately. Allow the extra muslin to extend outward. Pin the back to the front. at plate level. Okay. Okay. Check to see what the difference is between the outer edge, the lengthwise grain of the front at the outer edge and the lengthwise grain of the back at the outer edge but starting from the dart working down to the waistline. You'll notice that from the dart up to the plate there is no way that we can balance the grain because the muslin has been brought down in the underarm armhole area. So the balancing will be contained within the area from the dart to the waistline. <clears throat> Pin the two edges together tentatively and see what the relationship is. Now in this particular case it seems that the Lengthwise grains line up just about precisely. This won't happen. 
all the time. As, as a matter of fact, it happens very few of the times. There is usually some difference between the edges. Whatever the difference is, measure it at the dart and then bring down the two edges to each other so that they are parallel and equal. Pin at waistline tape level at the outer edge. Smooth from the outer edge back towards the body to the waistline and re-pin the back if necessary so that there's no bubble and no resistance in relationship to the front. If you look at the muslin carefully, you will see that there is a slight resistance. The front is a little fuller and needs more muslin. In that case, we would have to release the pins at the back waistline, bring the two panels to each other once again, and adjust the back to accommodate the front. Okay. Now, in doing that, check the back to see that the transition from the waistline to the plate is smooth. If there's any diagonal pull, such as there's a very minor one here, perhaps you need to bring the back up a thread or two to adjust and relieve the tension. And perhaps the cross grain at the shoulder blade would require a very modified adjustment. Once having adjusted the grain lines at the underarm, we can then proceed to complete the pinning of the back at the underarm. Notice that in balancing, the length grain has moved closer to the side seam. Bring the back and the front together once more and use one pin working at the front to pin the back and the front together. That's pin whichever way is most comfortable for you so that you can do it accurately. Notice you're pinning the back according to the true body line of the front. The dart will be placed in alignment with a skirt or at princess position or equivalent to the width of the distance from center front to the dart at the uh, waistline front. If you work with the waistline front, measure it. and mark it. Okay. This pin becomes your holding pin for position of dart. Move the excess over to the holding pin, crease the pickup, and repin through 
to secure pickup. Okay. The bottom of the bodice has now been completed. Let's work at the neckline. In this bodice, we will have a neckline dart rather than a shoulder dart. The neckline dart position will find itself approximately an inch and a quarter from center back towards the shoulder seam. Uh, there will be a variable uh, depending on the shape of the body. Ultimately, remember the shape of the body is the deciding factor. But as a basic, we will be working with the inch and a quarter position. Smooth over from tentative location and mark the inch and a quarter. Place the pin into at the cross mark to secure position. Smooth muslin up from the shoulder blade. Okay bringing the lengthwise grain straight up to the neck shoulder intersection. In doing that, we find that there is excess muslin that wants to fall into the neck area. That will be the formation of our neck dart. Tentatively secure the muslin into place, push the dart pick up towards the holding pin, re-pin, perhaps releasing the muslin for a moment makes it easier to pin, re-pin and hold up the dart, allowing it to extend outward. Smooth from the dart towards the neckline shoulder intersection, pinning at the location previously marked on the front. Now, to complete the, dart, uh, the, the shoulder, we still want to accommodate the curve of the shoulder in that area from neck to armhole. Pick up your pinch and secure at shoulder seam. Pick up a pinch on the other side of the princess and secure at shoulder seam. And then smooth up from the shoulder blade to the bridge shoulder intersection. The draping of the bodice of the back bodice has been completed. Check to see that the grains are properly balanced, that there are no diagonal strains. <clears throat> and finally, before removing, determine the vanishing points of your dart. In bodice one, it was mentioned that the dart at shoulder was to be three inches. And that is an average length. That is also an average length for the neck dart. However, we could estimate the length on our body particularly and see how it relates to the three inch average. Smooth the ease area away temporarily and blend against the body, smooth against the body, to determine vanishing point of the muslin. And based on this body contour, it seems as if the dart would end about here. To check on this body, it works out just in the vicinity of three inches, perhaps three and an eighth. Okay. In the waistline area, the dart will come up 
no higher than the bottom of the armhole. It could perhaps be lower, as discussed previously, but remember, it shouldn't be any higher than the bottom of the armhole. And so we, we estimate that, and we can see that we will use the bottom of the armhole as our point. It, it would not be lower on this body. We're now ready to mark the bodice before removing. Cross mark at base of neck, dot, seam line, cross mark each side of neck dart, dot to shoulder neckline intersection, mark shoulder on the back according to the seam line of the front, dot from the shoulder along the upper ridge to shoulder blade grain line and stop. We may, if we wish, identify plate position for the back. It is not absolutely necessary. We'll mark on the pin and at plate. Do not mark the side seam. Come down to the waistline, mark on the pin and at cross marker front. dot along waistline to waist dart, cross mark, waist dart on each side. Okay, dot halfway from dot to center back and then just cross mark center back at mid tape. Okay. We've now marked the bodice front and back. We now want to remove both the front and the back bodice from the figure. When we do this, we will separate the back from the front at the shoulder seam, remove all pins from the figure, but we will not separate the underarm seam of the back and the front. Before we can start to true, once again, we want to check and make sure that our marks have been clear and precise. Let's check the, the markings on either side of the dart. Take out the pinches. Remove the dart pin. Make a tiny little notation of the vanishing point of your neck dart waist dart, check, rid of the pinches. Turn the two sections with the front facing up and cup the front so that the side seam of the front and the back, the side seam markings of the front and the back are laying flat on the table with no distortion. 
if there is a distortion at this point, we still have the opportunity to make the adjustment. We can check our length grain, we can check our cross grain, and we can make an adjustment at the waistline. We will not touch the position, however, of the um, underarm at plate. So allowing the plate position to be constant, we can remove the pin at the waistline and check to make sure that the two panels are laying flat and in balance. Now, in looking closely on the table, I noticed that where on the figure it seemed as if the two lengthwise edges were precisely in line with each other, it turns out that they really are not. There is about a scant quarter difference between the edges. If that is so, then we will readjust the lower portion in the waistline area, bringing the two edges into a more accurate balance. Now, in doing so, it shifts the relationship of the back and the front cross mark. Let's see how much that shift entails. Using the front cross mark as your guide, let's pin through to the back. Having already marked the back on the figure, we now have a comparative. We see that the original marking is about a scant quarter of an inch, just as the uh, relationship of the outer edge correction evolved, so would the correction in the waistline uh, result in the same amount. So what we do in a case like that is adjust the pickup of the dart. What we have done is we have taken away that little bit more from the back, which means it gets tighter and we have to take it back from the dart. And so when we true our dart, we will have to make a notation to equal the amount that we've removed from the side seam. Okay, whatever that is at this point, we can note. It's really a scant quarter. And in doing that, doing it in red is wise because then you'll remember exactly which one is the corrected one. Okay, now having corrected the balance, we want to now trace off the body line of the front onto the back and the extended line of the front onto the back. And so let's remove the pins in the area of the side seam so that we clear the area for truing. We'll now trace off the underarm seam of the front onto the back. Cross mark at waistline. Trace body line. There's a pin, skip over the pin. Up to plate position. And trace the extended line. Up to dropped position intersecting and cross mark. Okay, we have now traced the side seams and while they are still pinned, we can add the seam allowance, one inch, beyond the extended line and cut the excess away. So the process here is the same as in bodice one. The difference being only that the balancing begins at the dart down to the waistline. OK. 
Okay. The front has now been completed. We can lay it aside and continue with the rest of the truing for the back. Let's begin with the lower bodice by truing the waist dart. Working with the adjusted dart pickup, find the center of the dart. Measure from center of the body at center back to the center of the dart at the waistline and at the level of the underarm. Note position of grain. Cross mark at that point and connect from the center of the dart to the top of the dart at the vanishing point. Connect to each side to complete truing of the dart. The truing of the neck dart can work two ways. Some pattern makers like to bring the dart at an angle to meet the top of the waist dart. However, some pattern makers prefer to use the center of the dart and work with the grain line at the center of the dart. I will work with the grain line at the center of the dart. measure to determine center and identify center. Oh. Cross mark at the bottom of the dart and draw the grain line. Well, let's do that by measure rather than eye. We could do it by eye at this point. However, let's measure it. It's an inch and three-eighths at the top. Let's make it same inch and three eighths at the bottom <clears throat> and draw the grain line. And draw each side of the dart to complete. In order to complete the truing of the neck, we would have to close our dart. In order to complete the truing of the waistline, we would have to close our dart. Let's defer that and continue the truing of those lines that are not involved with any special treatment. And we will start with the shoulder. You will notice, if you look carefully, you will notice that the shoulder markings um, offer a slight curve, indentation, in the area between the neck and mid-shoulder. That indentation is a variable, again, with the shape of the body at this point. Some are far more curved, curvaceous in that area than others. Okay. Some are straighter. In this case, there is a very moderate curve. And the curve, as I say, extends from neck to about mid-shoulder. From mid-shoulder, the line would come straight out. This is similar to what you've done before. Okay, blend to that point that you see the curve, and then from that point on, bring your line straight out using the dots as your guide. Okay. Now, the armhole. In the back armhole, we need some guide to achieve the shape that's required. From the shoulder blade at the ridge position, draw a light guideline 
following the grain line for about an inch, an inch and a half. Very light. Okay. Then, starting with the bottom armhole, rest the straight of the curve against the straight of the grain and blend it down to lower armhole position. Bring the curve up, upside down or in the opposite direction. Rest the straight of the curve against, again, the straight of the grain and blend it in to the upper armhole curve. And in that way, we achieve our back armhole curve, which I remind you is not quite so curved as the front. Different type of curve. Be sure not to draw your curve so that you go into the body past the ridge area as that will scoop too much out of the body and leave you with no room for movement. All right, now in order to complete the neck, we want to close the neck dark. The first half an inch from center follows the cross grain. All this is review. Blend in from cross grain to follow the dots. then repin at the neckline same position shoulder seam has no dart no problem let's go to the waist dart Once again, we are going to need to move the pin from the waistline because we have to true the waistline seam. We'll leave it there just for one moment because before we can true the waistline seam of the back, we want to pin the underarm seam of the back and the front together and true the whole seam in one. Because the front has a dart, it would be preferable to pin the back over the front to avoid the extra bulk of turning back a dart uh, pickup. And so that's how we will proceed. Lay the extended lines to each other.
Remember, come down one quarter inch from waistline side seam for ease of movement. Place a cross mark to either side of the side seam squaring off. Okay. Now, at the darts, we will work towards the center, center back, center front, following from the dart to the dot at the middle, and then squaring with cross grain at center back and center front. If you look closely at the cross marks on the back dart, you'll notice that the cross marks at waistline don't line up. That happens sometimes when you're pinning on the figure. And when that happens, after you have closed your dart carefully, making sure one side is not stretched or eased into the other, if you have this kind of discrepancy, it is advisable to take the midpoint, compromise the two cross marks, and work at the middle. And so that's what we will do, and we'll make a notation at that point. Okay. From the center of the area, between the dart and the center back, we will square off with the cross grain. Okay, do that on both sides. Okay, now from the dart in the front to the equivalent area in the back, we want to blend for a smooth, continuous curve, using the dots as a guide, remembering to come down and blend to the lowered point. Having drawn your waistline, bring your pins back to the waistline seam. And at this point, add your one, measure the one inch for seam allowance and cut excess muslin. to release the tension around the waistline at other areas. It allows the bodice to fro flow more freely. Trim away at all other areas to one half inch seam allowance at upper portion and allow just a bit more temporarily at the lower portion of the armhole to retain the cross mark at plate pending final corrections. Half inch at neckline. 
the underarm seam is pinned. The last seam to be pinned together is the shoulder. Again, remember, in curved areas, when you have to turn seam allowance back, it's advisable to clip your seam allowance so that the muslin will be released and not restrictive in this manner. Your pin. at one end first and at the other end. You'll notice that although there is no dot at the shoulder seam, there is still ease retained. Divide that ease, distribute it equally, so that it disappears. Put it on the form and check the fit. <laughs>